Welcome back to another Super Magnet Man video and I want to take this time to thank you for watching the videos that we've done and sharing them and your comments that help us keep pushing to the next level. We want to help the world understand magnets better. So with that I'll tell you what we're going to cover today. This video is about how magnets act in an array. This is something many customers have contacted us about, not specifically asking how do magnets act in an array, but they design a problem and they present it, an application to us that has a lot to do with how these magnets are going to interact when they are close together. So I wanted to put together this exercise so that you can understand better how magnets act together. We're going to be working through the exercise of making this 5x5 five five array of magnets. These magnets are 30 millimeter square by 4 millimeter thick and they're in 40 grade magnets and we're putting them together. Now they are continuously repelling each other because all of these have the south pole pointing up and what we're going to look at is how we put this together and how it affects the readings. You can see the readings up here. We've already got the data up here and we're going to go through this step by step and show you how we get this information so you will better understand how magnets work together in an array. We're going to take these magnets and I've already got my center reading off of this one and it measured 1400 gauss, the one that's in the center of the array. Now I put the magnets in all around it. The individual gauss readings are up in black, 1400, 1380, 1370, and so forth. Now we're going to take it apart and we're going to measure the gauss reading on each of these magnets individually now that we've put them into an array. We'll go ahead and put the first magnet in the center. Get it lined up. Now it's in place. Now we get the gauss measure reading on it. And the Gauss reading is 1828. I want the same pole to be pointing up and I'm going to get the corner magnets first. So put the first corner in. Now it's down. And then we get to the last one. And the last one is in place. I've taken the cover off. This protective cover allowed me to put the magnets through the slot and line it up so that one by one I could put them in place, forcing them to go where I wanted them to go. And then they are being held with VHB tape on the bottom and I have super glue and epoxy in between all of the cracks. And hopefully that's going to last long enough for us to get the readings off of it. So with that in mind, my very first one in this upper right hand corner we see is a thousand and sixty. So I'm going to use pink and I'm going to put that up here. We dropped, as you can see, on the three by three in this one from fourteen hundred to a thousand sixty. Now we'll go to the top middle one. With this middle one, we're reading seven seventy five. This one, nine oh five. Now the one in the center and the one in the center, 630. Notice what's happening. It dropped from 1400 for the magnet, but when I put it on the VHB tape, because it has steel backing it, even though it's through the VHB tape, what happens is it boosted it to 1828. So just that magnet, when it was mounted by itself, had a Gauss reading of 1828 in the center. Then I put the magnets around it, and when I put the magnets around it, you can see that it dropped all the way to 630, being the center magnet. As we look at this one, we can see what our Gauss reading is in the center. And our center Gauss reading is 690. We have the corners. We have 26. 80, and then on the edge we have 1800, this other corner is 2880, and this corner is 2900, and our last corner 2740. Now all of these are measuring south pole up. If we get right into crack where the magnets meet, you can see it'll flip to the north pole, and that's what we would expect. 
as we have some leakage that is going in between the cracks and we can see that this magnetism is going back through there because there is some air gap there. Now what we want to do to get a good picture of this is to look at it with our magnet viewing film. And this magnet viewing film shows us that we have those white lines and you can see the white lines along the edges, that's our north pole. And you can see the north pole flux in between the magnets. We see that it's smooth in the center of the magnets. That's an even gradient across those. All the same pole in the south pole. Now, I like to look at this using our glass dish with some iron powder mixed with silicon oil. The silicon oil is clear and has the right viscosity for the iron powder to work with it. And I take the iron powder and pour it on top of the magnets. And we're going to do a little slow-mo shot in just a minute, but you can see now that it's hitting in the center and sort of standing. Then as I start moving out near the edges, it runs to the areas where the higher flux is. Now as it gets closer and closer, it bunches up and grows these taller and taller stalagmites of magnetism as it's coming up, and you can see how it's running to the edge as it falls and then it grows and it looks a little bit like cedar trees. And then we get a 3D view of what the magnetism looks like because the iron powder is growing in the same direction, same shape as the magnetic flux is. As we get near the edges, we can see that we can push it and you'll see it laying down. It's very flat on the edge because the flux is going to loop around the edges. If we mix it all up and push that out to the edge and pull it back in, it'll always go to the point of higher strength. In the center, you see it looks straight up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to expand this and go to a five by five. Hopefully this will hold together. So as a better shot of this, we can see this is what it looks like at this point. Okay, after a lot of work, I think I have the five by five grid of magnets together. So let's take a look at what that does to our data. I'll move this clamp that's holding the last one in. It's popped off a few times and we'll see what we're getting. This is the five by five grid of magnets. Now while I had it held down, I've gone ahead and gotten the readings off of it because these magnets may fly off while we're doing this video. They have been all week. So with this, I want us to take a look at what we saw. When we looked at the center magnet, and I put just the center magnet down, before I put it to the metal, it was a 1400 gauss in the center of the magnet. I then mounted it on the VHB tape with the steel behind it, which held it in place, but it added a little bit of air gap to it, and the field reading was 1828 gauss in the center. Now, I went and I made it into this three by three, three grid, and the field dropped to 630 gauss on the center magnet. Then I've made this five by five and you see it has dropped all the way to 345 gauss in the center magnet. Now if I took all these apart, the center magnet would still read right back to what we started with. <clears throat> it's its presence in this large array that's changing it. And one of the things you see in the picture of the grid is that there are some air gaps in there. Some of these magnets are really hard and when you leave them for a few hours, even though they're held with VHB tape and superglue, they manage to push themselves apart one millimeter, half millimeter, or something like this. And that creates the air gap and then you'll see the flux lines on the film that you can see where the little grid pattern goes and that's where all the flux is going around in between those magnets. But it still has a huge impact on the overall magnet. Just a little bit is going in through the cracks. Now, when we look at what happens to the outer magnets, when we were looking at the, the center reading on these, this next row that made up our three by three, you see that the edges went to 1060, 775, 10, uh, 1003 and so forth. When we then put this other set of magnets, look what happened to their reading. 435, 315, 518, 445. 
and our outer ring of magnets, 1040, 920, 790, 695, 1170. So the field is stretching farther out and going around, and that'll give us some corner readings of 3,100 gauss and 2,900 gauss, 2,990 and 3,030 on the very corner corner of these magnets. And that's where the flux is looping around the edge very close and adds a lot of magnetism to the, to the edges. So I wanted you to see mainly how these magnets interact in a large array. It's not really something we would expect. Now I want to show you one more thing with this and we're going to take a look at something that really is surprising when you see it in action. This is the center and the center magnet. It's south, south, south. All 25 of these magnets have the south pole pointing up. I have this magnet, which is the same magnet, but it is attracted to it here, and I get a reading here of 1655 because it's got some influence from the other magnets. And I pull it over and, it's, and check it, it's 1340. Now if I flip it over, it keeps trying to flip because these repel. I have a south against a south. But I can push it down, and once it gets about right there, it's actually attracted to it, and it sticks. I turn loose and it stays. Now if I measure on top of this magnet, I'm getting a North Pole flux of 1510 on this center magnet. Now I take this back off and it'll flip when it gets to the edge. I can check again in the middle and because we did a little bit of demagnetizing we're now measuring 230, 240, 390 gauss range so it's a little bit lower than it was. Now we see that it's attracted in the center repels like this and we push it down, measure again on the back side, and it's 1590 north again. Now we'll take this magnet up and it's allowed us to see two magnets that repel each other and make them stick together because of this large field which is weak in the middle but very strong on the edges. We'll take a look at this with our magnetic viewing film. We we'll put the magnetic viewing film, you can see that we have some of this traces of that re demagnetization as it rubs across the surface. It's just very light, very shallow demagnetizing, but the film lets us see that. You see all the white lines around the edges is the North Pole, and you can see the dark spots are the South Pole. The light cracks in between show where the flux is going in between. Now we want to see what this looks like with our silicon oil and iron powder. We can spread this out and you can see the flux is going to the sides because that's where the magnetism goes. The iron powder is moving. It's laying over like this as it gets closer to the edge until it gets flat. And now in the center we can drag it back to the center and make it stand up in the middle. And you can see it stands straight up in the center. Wow, that's a lot to cover. We just wanted to help you better understand how magnets act together in an array. And one of the things that I hope that you picked up on is how the field affects. This grid of magnets actually acts like one large magnet that are of these dimensions rather than a combination of 25 unique individual magnets. So hopefully this will help you better understand some of your applications. And again we want to thank you for watching and make sure you share this video with your friends and we look forward to seeing you on our next video coming up soon. Thank <laughs> you.